Hey everybody, this is Curtis Harris, and we are back for a solution video for week 36 of Workout Wednesday. Hopefully you don't need this video this week. There's nothing too complicated about this challenge. Uh, we have a simple line chart with a few reference lines and a custom axis, which I think will be the, the bulk of the solution video. Nothing else is too complicated here. It's just setting up that axis and configuring it to work with the line chart. And that's really what this challenge is all about. It's just figuring out different ways to make Tableau do what you want it to do. There's nothing fancy about data viz here. Nothing super special to write home about, but this is a cool way to kind of show your data and help people interact with it in ways that they aren't really used to. So let's dive in. Um, what are we looking at here? So if we look at the viz, um, we have a quick title here. Can you build a custom access with a tracking reference line? Doesn't really matter. Uh, we have a line chart that's just showing sum of sales. Um, so by month, we have the sales value for that month. No different breakdowns, it's just straight month and sales. We have a reference line here that's hard coded to look at the window max uh, of the line chart here. So it's always going to be this November point because the data doesn't get filtered. It's just the last three years of orders, and it's always going to be here on uh, November 2018. Unless you were to say, filter things out like this, um, keep these, and then it will switch to whatever is the new highest point, but that's not part of the challenge. So part of the challenge is just to get this reference line here. And if I wanted to show you that, that's probably the easiest bullet point of all of them. And all I did there is just did a window max sum of sales. And in these situations, I don't like to waste, um, not waste, I don't like to build a calculation that's just for this one purpose and clutter up my dimensions and measures pane. So what I'll normally do is just do an inline calc. And if you're not familiar with an inline calculation, what you can do is just double click here in the marks card, which will open up this calculation box and start typing. And anything you could do in the calculated field dialog box would be here as well in the inline calc. So if you know how to type it and you don't need that extra assistance, you don't need the error checker, things like that, just go ahead and put it in here and it'll save you some clutter. And this will adjust just like it would as a, a normal calculation. It's the same exact thing. So that's what I did here. Uh, window max sum of sales. You can see it right here already. I'll drag this copy off. And what we did was just add a reference line. Don't do that. Edit this reference line to show that window max sum of sales. And that's it. So super easy right there. Uh, no big deal. And what else does this viz do? Um, so that's the easiest part. The cool part is this access here. So we have another worksheet. As you can see, there's two worksheets in the view here. They're both contained in a single vertical um, layout container. And as you move over each point, and in desktop, it's it's pretty fluid. If you just move over, it kind of runs with your, your mouse and it'll track for you. You can see the reference line kind of updating down below as we mouse over our months, which is pretty cool. So what do we get when we mouse over April of 2018? We can see the sales value in the axis which is being shown via tooltip. Interacting with an axis in a standard chart, you can't do anything with it. Um, if I were to go turn on the axis here in the line chart, uh, you don't get any extra context. This is just one big axis that can't be really configured to show you any additional information. So this is one reason why this challenge is a little bit interesting and, and could be a good solution in your workplace. So we don't have to interact with the line chart at all. We can see the sales value here if all we want is the number. Now, if we want to see it in a more visual manner, we can look, scroll down with our eyes and see how that point intersects with the max and the rest of the points in the line chart. So if I scroll straight down with my eyeball, I can see we land on about $45,000 in sales for July 2018. You can see that's one of the lower values across all of these months, and it has a very wide um, gap between the highest month in sales. 
And that's made really simple by these three reference lines that are in view. So I have the highest month, I have the month I'm hovered over, and the line that brings my eye straight down to the point. So that's really the, the point of this whole exercise is just to have um, less eye clutter for your users. So as we mouse over these points, the viz takes our eye exactly where we need it to go. We go down, we go left, and then we scroll right back up to the next. And that kind of works that way every time. At least that's how my eye tracks. So I'm not sure how that works for you, but that's what I'm seeing. I mouse over this point, I go down to where it is based on the vertical line, and then I scroll left with my eye to see the value, and I go right back up to see how it compares to the max. So that's the whole point of this. So how do we do this? Let's go into our axis sheet. So like I showed you before, we're gonna turn off our axis on the line chart. And if you're not familiar with how to do that, it's simply unchecking the show header. Um, you can do that here through the column shelf, or you can do that down here in the actual view. Either way is fine. And what we wanna do is start to build out this axis. So what I did was just put a continuous order month on columns, just like it was in the line chart. And really all we're doing is just making these marks instead of an axis. So I displayed an axis here and I hit it, which is fine. And then I changed the mark type to circle. And what I wanted to do was give you that extra context, um, show one actual text mark per quarter and give you the extra marks in between without actually cluttering the view up with more um, text. So what we did here um, is looked at the order month and compared it to a quarter date. So if we look at this calculation here, we take our order month field, uh, which I calculated, this is an easy one, um, simply truncating the date to a month which provides, you know, more, uh, it's a lot more rigid than using Tableau's dates. It doesn't have the hierarchy, it doesn't allow for missed clicks. Using a calculation like this gets you the month every time and just the month. So that's why I like using that. So I said, if the order month is equal to the quarter of an order date, then display the order month. And this was kind of funny because I don't have a January 2019 data point. This data ends in December of 2018. I wanted to show the last point in the line as well. So I had to do something different for December. So I just hard coded that in here. Um, again, this, this might not work in practice in real life, but this works for this challenge. So if the order month is equal to a quarter, then display the order month or if the order month is exactly December of 2018, then you can go ahead and display it or else no. And we just wanted this as a label. So I put those right on the label. I said to show everything and allow things to overlap because the months that aren't quarters are null. So we're not gonna really get interference between two values. So I thought that was fine. We still get a mark for all the other months because we're using the regular order month field on columns, but we don't get a label, which is exactly the behavior we wanted. And then all I did to get that circle to appear on the non-labeled months and not on the labeled months was create a copy of my order month is quarter begin field and just change it up a little bit. So I said, if the order month is equal to a quarter begin, then no, you could write whatever you want here. This could be a one or a zero or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, I was just creating a binary solution. Or if the order month is the beginning of December, then no, or else yes. And that creates a binary field that I can put on color. So I threw that on color and said, when it's yes, show me that kind of teal that we have. And if it's no, then just be white which kind of makes an invisible mark. You can see it there. If I hover over, it kind of goes right between the zero, uh, right in the middle, but it's not that distracting. And when I'm not hovered over it, I don't see anything at all. So I thought it was fine that way. 
And then I added sales to the marks card and just created the same tooltip experience as the other sheet. All right, so that's the axis and there's nothing else to do here. This is all we need to do. The rest of the configuration is really on the dashboard and in the line chart. So if we go back to our dashboard, um, you can see a few things, two things happen when I hover over each month. I get a vertical reference line and a horizontal reference line that goes across. So what I did is, I, I know it's not hot right now, but I created a set action instead of parameter action, which allowed me to kind of clear everything out where a parameter action, it was a little more difficult or maybe not possible to clear what was the reference value um, when it wasn't highlighted. And that's kind of why I like set actions for most solutions is I can clear out the whole set if I want to and just make it nothing where a parameter, um, generally speaking, has to have a value at some point. So I created a, a set from my order month field by simply right clicking on order month and going to create and creating a set. So that's how I got this order month set, which is all my order month values. And on the dashboard, I'm going to do just one, two things. I'm going to highlight. I don't even think this one's necessary anymore. You can just remove this. That was from an earlier iteration. So I'm just going to do one thing. Um, I'm just going to change the set values on hover. So from sheet two, which is our axis, I'm going to target the order month set on hover. And when I mouse off of it, when I'm not looking at a focused month, I'm going to remove every value from the set. And all this is doing is just putting April 2017 as the loan set value, which then I can do things with. So now that we have our set action in place, we can go to our line chart and configure some things. So is set month. So I have a sales if set month. So I'm just going to go ahead, go ahead and look. If my order month is equal to my set month, then show sales or else be null. And this is set month field was created by looking at the order month set and then just pulling out the order month uh, when it's activated. So that's pretty easy. Um, I can just go ahead and do sum of sales. And when it's cleared, like we saw on the dashboard, this will just be null. So there's no reference line to speak of unless the set is activated. And then I can throw that on as a reference line for when the user is actually hovering over the dates in the axis. And when they're not, again, there will be no reference line because there is no value. We set it to null. If I set things to zero, we might end up seeing um, a faint line down at the bottom. So if I said zero and hit apply, we might get a reference line, but I don't see that either. So I guess that might work as well. We also have the is set month field on the view, which creates the vertical reference line. So if the order month set, then show the order month. And this reads a little funny. Um, so if you're referencing a set directly like this, a set is essentially a Boolean, so a true or false statement. And without anything else, it's saying only, only do this when this is true, meaning the value in the set. So those two if this is activated, then show me the order month or else don't do anything. And then that creates this vertical reference line that we see when we hover over the axis. So I'm going to edit the reference line. You can see that here, minimum. Uh, it doesn't matter. I could do max, average, whatever. Uh, it's not a big deal. It's only going to show when the set is activated. That's the, that's the main point. And that's pretty much it. So quick video um, that showed you pretty much everything you need to know um, to configure this. If I went a little fast, I do apologize, but this is essentially what's going on. 
And I could see taking off that highlight action actually helped the view. I think I like this a little bit better because it's not kind of blurring out the rest of the chart. So I think I'm going to go change that and update the challenge. But good luck. Uh, hopefully this video helped if you needed it. And we'll see you soon. Thanks.